friends, we're on to the last chapter in Stacks that we're going to cover. There is one more chapter after this, after chapter 10. It's called Virtual Work, but it's not a chapter I cover in my class, and I think most professors kind of <clears throat> don't cover that. But uh, anyway, I want to talk to you about moment of inertia, and uh, it, in particular, uh, we're talking about uh, the flexibility of beams is what this has to do with. The moment of inertia is given with a capital I, okay? And the moment of inertia is a geometric property of the cross section of a beam, okay? Okay, let's talk about the moment of inertia. Let's talk about um, some of the, let's talk about the strongest beam that you know about. What do you know? So it's like ah, a steel one, not, not the material that it's made out of, but the shape. What is the strongest shape? Well, probably an I-beam, right? If you were building a building, you might want to build it out of I-beams because that's strong. I don't know why it's strong, but it's strong. What about really flexible beams? Something that's super bendy in the summertime over a body of water. Ah, okay. Maybe, maybe a diving board. Okay. There's the cross section of a diving board. So this, not very flexible. That, very flexible. And why is that? Okay. So let me show you a beam. So you guys know on this channel, I have spared no expense. I have taken a pool noodle and cut, cut it into a uh, square cross section for you. But anyway, here's a beam, okay? When we start talking about bending beams, right? We're talking about like that. That's beam bending, okay? What do you know about the fibers inside of this beam? What do you know about the fibers on the top side of this beam? If I bend it enough, you can kind of see what's starting to happen there on the top. It's starting to wrinkle. Why is it wrinkling? Okay, because as I bend a beam, let me just draw that over here. There's my bent beam. Oh, that's not good at all. Okay, that's better. Okay, you've got to erase that right. Okay, so there's my bent beam. Okay. And so what's happening? The top of this beam is wrinkled because it is in compression. Okay. What about the bottom side of the beam? It's not wrinkled at all. You can bend it a whole lot and it doesn't ever wrinkle because the bottom part of the beam is being stretched. It is in tension. Okay. Well, at some point in this beam, it's got to go from tension to compression. I'm, let me draw it around compression to tension, right? It's got a switch and it switches right here in the middle. Okay. Right there. And the middle here is called the neutral axis. Okay. The neutral axis because nothing's going on there, right? You get your car, put it in neutral, nothing happens, right? Uh, it's also called the centroidal axis. Guess why? Because the neutral axis is always at the centroid of the cross section of the shape. So this is a symmetric shape, so the centroid is right in the middle. So that's where that occurs. And so for these beams, what we're going to have to do to calculate I, we're going to have to find the centroid of these beams. But we know how to do that because we've been practicing it, right? All right, so I like to think of the moment of inertia as the bendiness of the beam, okay? That's not even a word, is it? Or how prone a beam is to bending. Well, how do you know what's going on here? Okay, so let's do this. Let's draw those neutral axes in here. There's one there, okay? And here's one here. Okay, so if you start to bend that beam, what, what determines how bendy or how 
uh, prone to bending that beam is going to be. Well, what you have to do is look at, you have to look at half of the beam. Okay, so let's look at just the half above the neutral axis. So just, whoa, this top square here, okay? Where is the centroid of that top half of the beam? Well, the centroid of that top half of the beam is right there, right? Well, that's pretty close to the neutral axis, isn't it? What about this? The top half of this beam, where would it be? Okay, there it is. It's a T-shape, okay? And from your experience with, you know, centroid shapes, where would the centroid of that shape be? I don't know, maybe like, maybe like right there, right? Just into the top part of that beam. Well, what do we know about this? Well, on this one, that moment or that distance to that centroid is very big. The distance over here, what, what, is so little I can't even draw it, right? It's very small. So this, so when that distance is not very big, um, your the bendiness of that beam is very high, okay? So what we do with an I-beam is we have all this area up here to draw that centroid up, which makes these not as prone to bending, okay? So, when you get in the book, now in the, in the back of the centroid table, right in the, uh, the back cover of the book there, that table also has, it says geometric properties of areas. Well, one of the geometric properties that we're talking about is the, of that cross section, right? And for calculating I. And the equations to calculate all of those shapes are back there. So let's say that you had to go to the steel store this afternoon and buy some steel beams. What kind of steel beams could you go buy? Well, you could buy um, square tubing. Okay, that's a square. You could buy C-channel. You could buy maybe some T-bar, right, for making fence posts. You could buy Z-purlings. Does it look like that? Uh, you could buy angle iron. Okay, which is like an L. You could buy an I-beam. Okay, um, what else could you buy? You could probably buy just some round tubing, maybe even solid, right? So what do these shapes have in common? Let's just exclude that one for now. But all of these shapes are made out of rectangles. I know you were thinking, oh, they're all letters. No, that's not what I was going for. Um, <laughs> they're all made out of rectangles, right? This guy, if you divide him up, I could break this part into rectangles, just like we did in centroids. I could break that into rectangles. I could break that into rectangles, right? So in the back of the book, you'll see something for like rectangles. You'll see this, IXX equals 112BH cubed. IYY equals 112B cubed H. This is for rectangles. So let's talk about bending around an axis, okay? So I'm going to do this. I'm going to do a, here's X, here's Y, here's Z. Now let me get my beam. So let's say that we have this. I'm bending the beam like this, okay? You can see the beam is bent, right? What axis would this be bending around? Now the y-axis is coming straight out at you. Do you see it? What axis is that bending around? Well, think about this. If I bend the beam all the way around till it's a circle, when I'm say bending around an axis, it means that axis that would be going through the middle of my circle there, okay? So what axis am I bending around right now? That is bending around the x-axis, okay? That is what this means. This is bending around the x. Bending around the y would be like that, right? That would be bending around the y-axis, the one coming out at you. Bending around the z-axis, uh, that would be bending around the z-axis. So think about if you had a smile, what's the axis going right through the middle of the smile? That's the axis that you're bending around. 
That's very important to understand, you know, is the beam, when it buckles maybe, is the beam buckling that way or is it buckling that way? Because you're talking about two different axes, right? That's around the Y that's coming straight at you. Um, this, or this, is buckling around the X axis, right? So I is going to be different depending on which axis that you're going around, okay? Now typically you'll see that given like this. That would be bending around the x-axis, and typically we bend around the x-axis because why? Because gravity sucks, right? Gravity makes beams bend this way. Rarely do beams bend to the side, right? That's, that's a rare occasion. But in the book, we're, we're going to have to calculate that. And that is given by this uh, y, y, okay? You'll also see these as little prime axis because this may be the real x-axis that the problem gives you. And then you'll have an X prime axis. That X prime axis that you see is that centroidal axis. You'll have to calculate where that is. Now, if, it, if the shape is nice and symmetric, that's easy. But if the shape is not symmetric, let's say it's like this, right? It's, it's smaller on the bottom than it is on the top. Then I'm going to have to go and do a centroid problem and calculate where, where is that distance right there. We'll call it Y bar, right? Where is that, that centroidal axis? That'll be step one, finding out where that is. And just in the next video, I'm going to show you uh, how to do that, okay? So now you know about bending around axes. You know about, you know, kind of an introduction. To, so these are, these are some equations that are in the back of the book. There's one more that you might, might have to calculate, and that is something for like really weird shapes, right? These are the ones you can go buy at the store now. But what can you not buy? Well, how about this one? A parabolic beam. What the heck is a parabolic beam doing here, right? And there's some equation, right? Uh, y equals, I don't know, x squared or 2x squared, some equation that defines that curve. Well, guess what we can do over here? We can calculate i, x, x by doing the integral from 0 to y of y squared dA, right? And there is a calculus method, not to fear, it's very similar to the calculus method we learned in centroids in that chapter. But we can do the calculus method to um, calculate the moment of inertia about what I call wacky shapes, right? That's a wacky shape over there. These are just uh, rectangles. So rectangles, triangles, circles, easy stuff, easy shapes are in the back of the book. Wacky shapes, we're going to have to learn this method. So stay tuned for the following videos, and I'm going to show you how to use that. This was just an introduction telling you what the heck this moment of inertia really mean. Now you know what it means. Let's see how we use it. Well, I'll tell you where we're really going to use it. We're going to use it in solids and we're going to use it in this equation. Sigma equals mc over i. This is the centroid or the central beam bending equation. It's called the flexure formula that you'll learn in solids. M, do we know what M is? It's bending moment. That's our shear moment diagrams. We can find that. C is just a distance. This is just a distance like, um, you know, maybe a, maybe Y equals some distance, right? That's easy. And then there's I. What the heck is I? I is everything we've been talking about. So we learn how to calculate I in statics, but you really use I when you get to solids and you start designing beams. So stay tuned. And I'm going to show you how to do it on the next video. Here we go.